Hey everybody and welcome to the fist bit. Tonight is with uh, my good friends, the Gene Twins. So tonight they are going to talk about what they do as far as their branding. Um, they are identical twin sisters, so it's gonna be so cool. Just feel free to share this video, hit that like button down below. It helps out with visibility and algorithms. Feel free to share this uh, broadcast. Hey, how are you? Oh, so there we go. How are you doing tonight? We're good. How are you doing tonight? Awesome. I'm uh, just so, so happy to have you on. I just have the best guests. I have to admit, I have the absolute best guests. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a good night. Just go ahead and start off by telling us your names and, um, you know. <laughs> All right. I'm Gertz. I'm Gina. We're the Gene Twins. You're the Gene <laughs> We have our own personal Instagrams, the prettier half and the cuter half. But we have Instagram together called the Jeans Ones. We thank you so much for inviting us to your live. We are looking at your page. We've been following you for a while and like really interested in what you're doing. We see how motivational you are and it's how so like positive. encouraging and like just so inspiring people every day. Like you're always like the best positive attitude. Like, oh my gosh, yes, we have to definitely be a part of that. Wow. So you asking us was like, oh, because we already were going to ask you. So, <laughs> right? oh, really? Yes. <laughs> so cool mm -hmm. this is, so no it's so funny because like i'm just you know little i'm like so just weird you know i'm weird so i'm just like little old me whatever and i'm like i have to ask them you know because y'all are always just so you're always you're always positive like you're always like putting that out there and i think that that's so important and it's so cool and um no, you're so welcome. But it's so it's so awesome. Um, so, I I I sense your positivity. I see your positivity. You all are always like doing putting that out there, and it's it's kind of hard because of the way that everything is in the world. And so, just the fact that you know you all put that out there, I just I really appreciate it, and I think the world does too. Um, yeah. So just tell us a little bit about like what you do for a living. Yeah. First and foremost. Okay. Um, first and foremost, we are brand ambassadors. We are brand influencers, but we do have our everyday things that we do in our life. Other than that, we are students. She is mm -hmm. a law student and I'm a nursing student. I'm currently a geriatric nurse, but I'm going to school to go to my next level of nursing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so cool. Thank you. So, you know, I have to ask just because you're twins. So those are completely different fields. Um, I know. And it's so funny because everyone in our family does medical. Like mm -hmm. our dad's a nursing assistant, our older sister did medical assistant. Like our mom got her nursing assistant degree. So like everyone in our family does medical. And I'm like the black sheep who's like, oh, let me do law. But <laughs> household they're just like girls you're going into law no we forbade you you're going to go into medical but she's like no i'm gonna follow my dreams so that's good <laughs> they, they forbade you that's deep <laughs> <laughs> no they're pretty encouraging they're super supportive about it this amount of time that they're proud of me so that also helps <laughs> that is that's so cool yeah it is it's such a contrast for encouragement as long as you're i guess a lawyer or a doctor they're happy yeah, one, two. Yeah. <laughs> You're Caribbean from where? Haiti. Haiti. Mm -hmm. Haiti. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We were born in Haiti, but we were raised in Naples, Florida, which is where we currently reside. Yeah. Um, we, she moved here when she was three, and I moved when I was four. I came a year after her. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember? For a year. Oh. Um, no, I went back there. Um, 2018, it was just the best experience ever. It's not as ugly as they make it seem on TV, but um, <laughs> it's just beautiful and just it's so beautiful. Paradise. Um, yeah. the, the most beautiful oceans. The ocean is so blue, so clear. clear. You, you can, can see, see the your, fish in the you bottom of your ocean. Reflection. So, do you speak French? No. Well, Gerd speaks it a little bit and she understands it very well. I, okay, I could really, this is so interesting. I could really speak my home language, Haitian Creole. I try, I try. But Gerd is out here with four languages and I'm just like, oh God, I don't like going out with them. I'm just like, oh God. 
I know I'm horrible. I'd be like that person when we're at a restaurant. We'll, I'll like make sure we go to like Hispanic restaurants. So I can practice my Spanish with the server, and then I'll be on the phone with my mom and um, with our mom and Haitian Creole, and then I'll be talking to her in English, and then I'll be like, oh, popping out the French every once in a while. My mom. <laughs> I'm like, you don't really? need to show off. Okay? Like, show off to someone who can speak it too. If so the person can't speak it, then no. <laughs> Whatever. I understand a little bit of French. Um, I can't write French. Um, I'm not sure if girls can write French. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I can write Haitian Creole. I'm not the best at writing it, but I think I'm better at writing it than I am at speaking it. But when I'm super mad, I just like spit out Haitian Creole. Like, like I was like my first language. So. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. You all are so different, but you're so alike. So. I know, right? We're the, perfectly the same, but perfectly, like, extremely different. Yeah, it's funny because in high school, um, she was always the science math person, and I was like, ooh, I'll cheat my way through those subjects. Don't talk about <laughs> And then I'm, like, the history literature person. So I guess yeah. kind of like our fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, I love science. Like, I wasn't, you know, I didn't, like, whiz it or anything, but, like, it's just, I, it's one of the subjects that I researched, like, researched extensively. <laughs> Because I just go on these little, you know, let me research this. Let me look into that. And um, it was, it was really, it was really cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy you like science though, because if I don't have to do it for school, I'm not looking at nothing science related. Nope. If it's not for work or for school, nope. Keep me away from That's that. how I feel about math. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely how I feel about math. I'm taking a math class now, and I'm just like, it was the first day. My teacher's like, "Do you guys got that?" I'm just like, I'm "Sorry, you're gonna have to go back to the beginning." He's like, "I was like, my bad." <laughs> <laughs> so tell tell us a little bit about what you do for your 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 blog your blog topic for your blog, and I know that you ladies are on YouTube as well. Um, let's talk about your goals with that. Okay, so we're currently on YouTube as the Gene Twins, so you can't miss us on every single platform. We are the Gene Twins. So Instagram, <laughs> Snapchat, Twitter, WhatsApp. Facebook, WhatsApp, all the same. <laughs> we're, we're working on creating um, a Google business as well. We and said. a website. Yeah, as well as a LinkedIn for that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, our goal with YouTube is to get monetized through YouTube. So to get monetized through YouTube, to reach the thousand subscribers and the four thousand watch hours, and we're very close. We have already reached nine thousand views, so we're super happy for that. We're thankful for everyone who supported us and that. Um, we're looking for to becoming big YouTubers. We wanna, there's like a lot of big YouTubers, but they're usually not people of color. They're, mm -hmm. they're not usually as big people of color. We wanna make sure that people, like, people are able to see that no matter who you are, you can make it. No matter who you are, you can show your life if people are interested in what you're doing. We have a lifestyle brand, so we have a vlogging brand, so we're just showing that no matter what past of life you've been through, you can, people are interested in your life and you can influence people, you can be influential to everyone around you. Um, in the terms of our brand, we're looking for more of like an entertainment perspective. So yes. we're working on finding different ways to kind of tap into our different talents and our creative energies. So we're we're about to start um, promoting more people on our page and yes. do more collaborations and more partnerships with different companies. And we've done some partnerships already with fitness companies and wellness coaches and trainers. We've been featured on some podcasts already. And we are about to promote for a jewelry boutique. Mm -hmm. We promoted for Black Woman Owned Business um, Boutique, as well as we're trying to promote for different platforms, different aspects of um, the lifestyle brand. And we're working on creating flyers and posters and also creating YouTube YouTube intros, intros for other influencers as well. So we're working on finding services and needs for other influencers. Yes. Um, we've also been on a radio show. Mm -hmm. And the topics that we focus on so far on our YouTube channels were our makeup, everyday makeup going out makeup a day in the life with us there's like really cool vlogs about day in the life with college students well for us it'd be day in the life with twins and uh, like our viewers can take a day with us to pick up stuff at our p.o box things like that and giveaways we've been doing a lot of givers on our youtube we currently have one going on right now it's just back to school well back to the classroom giveaway school supplies giveaway over a hundred dollars worth of school supplies so definitely make guys um enter the giveaway for that the link is in our YouTube bio as well as our personal Instagram bio as well in our Instagram bio. We're, we also focus a lot of on a lot of um, social justice issues. We are very passionate about issues such as health, especially health in the black community as well as immigration because those two topics affect us heavily and they've been a big part of our lives. So we want to make sure that we 
um, are an advocate for those topics and that we use our platform to speak about, about that. And we speak about voting, the injustice of voting mm -hmm. in America, and just educating people more about voting because, I mean, voting can be such a challenging subject because you, some people don't know what the legislative branch or what the judicial branch or the executive branch is all about. And some people think the most important voting would be the presidential, but no, it's actually starts right. right in our local communities, like, like Georgia with their senators. Um, right now they're having a, they're currently having i think it ended yesterday the georgia election i think so i'm not sure but it's the start of the the house of representatives starts the school districts and whoever is yeah, that's really city important. council officials and your sheriff mm -hmm. that makes a big difference with the so that's right in your backyard you know yeah city policies make a big difference in our lives and affects us a lot more sometimes in our national policies yes uh so charity just just made a comment um as she said you ladies are amazing and i just want to let you know that i second that i love <laughs> that you first of all i'll follow you on youtube uh oh, thank <laughs> you. I, I i had the sub because um for one thing um you got me at social justice and you know just the fact that you're teaching you know judicial literacy because so many people don't know what's going on. And, you know, just like you said, and, you know, it's, it's really, it's sad. So I'm glad that you, you all are um, speaking up on that and you're elaborating and you're educating people. And then on top of that, you're keeping it fashion. So, you know, you, <laughs> you gotta keep it cute, you know? <laughs> you keep it cute. So it's like, I love what, you know, what you're doing and I love that you know, you are, you know, you're being a voice, you all are being voices for, you know, so many different aspects. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, I know that you uh, two are going to definitely be like mega YouTubers and, and whatever else you want to do because um, you're just, you're doing so much and, and, and these are good topics and you're so interesting. And, um, I like how you you mentioned earlier how you want to prove that um, you know you can be who you are and someone out there a lot of people out there actually are going to accept and love you for being exactly who you are like you're not gonna have to go out and try to be like this person on YouTube or like this person on Instagram because you know you're you're you are for someone. And and so there's like a crowd, there's a niche. So yes, every every brand has something unique, and each each brand's followers or each brand's um, supporters will follow and support for just that uniqueness. A lot of times, people try to be a lot like other people, but that's not what some people want to see. Some people want to see like, okay, they're different, you know? Like we love your brand; it's very different. Yeah. Exactly. And so another thing that you mentioned that I wanted to just ask about, if you don't mind, completely up to you. So you mentioned how um, you want to advocate for Black people in the healthcare community. And because you said you had personal experiences. Do you mind elaborating on that no, a little? I don't have twins, okay? Oh, so when you had twins, <laughs> I love my twins, so she's the most important thing to me. But <laughs> <laughs> twins apparently supposedly only one of the twins end up getting sick i don't know what it is but i ended up with um missing one of my valves one of, in my heart the trichester valve and something as simple as fixing the bed girls could be done with her bed in like one or two minutes i'm over here like girls i'm out of breath you know like walking upstairs i'm out of breath you know sometimes it's like wow that's sad you know like it's something so simple but that's just my everyday life walking upstairs i'm like oh my gosh it's always affected me like in high school i ended up missing 14 days of class because i was in the hospital so that's also what made me go into healthcare because i went to learn how to take care of myself right i, I love taking care of people but i can't take care of people if i can't take care of myself so this wasn't something that was found when you were born Yes, it yes. was. So oftentimes with twins, the theory is that it's like a superstition kind of too, that one twin will take more of the nutrients than the other twin and they'll like suck She's the great. nutrients out. Yeah. I think they call it the, <laughs> I thought there's a syndrome they call it, but anyway, mm -hmm. so she ended up having neurocardiogenic um, atresia. Oh, no, cardiogenic syncope, yeah. as well as tricuspid atresia. Yeah. So two different conditions. 
and she is a two times open heart surgery survivor because of it, which makes me super happy. Hmm. Um, that's why she came to the U.S. before me because she had um, she sought medical treatment in New York as well as my other surgery. So, hmm. but it's it's just something like as a 24 year old, I where most 24 year olds are able to drive. I'm unfortunately I can't drive because I end up fainting. So Gertz is my personal chauffeur. <laughs> but I can rarely drive myself, so. <laughs> Almost every time. <laughs> She's not kidding. <laughs> but it's just something like that. So that's what made me want to go into healthcare um, more because I find that in our community, we don't learn enough about our health because unfortunately in America and even in every country, there's so much injustice towards our people, especially in the healthcare community, where a lot of black people were scared to go to the doctor because, especially our men, they're, they don't like going to the doctor at all. I don't know if it's they're afraid, but they don't like going to the doctor at all. And even black women, where we don't feel like we're hurt at the doctor. And I'll tell the doctor, because I have scoliosis, for example, I told my doctor that I had a lot of back pain. I was diagnosed with scoliosis. Like, who diagnosed with you scoliosis? Like, you don't have scoliosis. I'm just like, well, I haven't been seeing you all my life. Well, maybe my doctor be before you diagnosed me. She just was not happening. And then she started assessing my back. She's like, oh my God, you definitely have scoliosis. I'm just like, so apparently I was just lying about this, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I'm in pain every single day. Being a black woman, if I didn't defend myself, or if I didn't advocate for myself, I would have never been heard. So it's just things like that, where I want to make sure that in our black community, everyone gets a voice. Everyone gets a voice either for healthcare, either for immigration, either for just, just, I mean, everyday things. That is so incredibly important. And again, like, I'm so glad that, you know, you are speaking up about that and advocating for that. That's scary, you know, um, just with the things, the diagnoses that are found so late or not even, you know, at all. Um, definitely something that that needs it that is an issue and that that needs to be fixed especially in terms of mental health i don't know if you mind me saying this when it comes to school she's super smart and she's like really good at math and sciences where i tend to go more towards like defense side where i can like defend the theory and literature and history but i cannot count to save my life right so with her sometimes she didn't do as well in school but it's because she wasn't able to because she wasn't having the proper resources for her so she has ADHD, she has also has OCD, but then she's seen this to doctors for so long, they're just like, oh yeah, right, you just want Adderall. Yeah, right, you, you know, you just yeah. want like the stimulant medication. Or but she can't like, even- I'm just a bad student. And right. And people are like, yeah. no, I'm not a bad student. Well, maybe I'm, a, I'm considered a bad student because I need these resources to help me be a good student, but they weren't hearing it. So. Yeah, but and it, she can't even get the stimulant medication because it affects her heart, because it has mm -hmm. her heart racing too quickly. So if anything, her saying that she has ADHD and her saying that she has um, OCD is because she needs like a, just a bit more extra time on the test, that's it, because she might need someone to go through note-taking skills with her, you know, things like that. Not because she wants the Adderall medication, but because like sometimes people just don't take certain people seriously when it comes to medicine. And we, we don't believe that we know our own bodies. Yeah. We don't believe that we know our own minds. So it's just like this, because they believe that because someone else took advantage of it, because someone else just wants the medicine, they can sell it, or someone just wants it so they can like, do it all nighter and procrastinate that everyone else is the same exact way. Yeah, so I guess that's what some college students will do, they just take it so that they can, you know, pull an all nighter. And I'm over here like, oh my God, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even with that though, it wasn't until college where I started learning more about my health, my mental health and my body too. And I was able to like advocate for myself when unfortunately in high school, it was harder to, in a college, I was able to advocate for myself where I started working with resources that allowed me to get extra time, allowed me to take these certain accommodations to help me succeed. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important that mental health be something that we talk about more, especially as Black women. For me, I don't think that I talk about it enough, but, you know, I'm a narcoleptic. I have narcolepsy. And, um, you know, it's it's crazy. <laughs> It's not like how people see in the movies, but you know, it's definitely something that um, affects my life. And I'm thankful that, you know, I'm able to receive treatment for it. I'm thankful that I'm able to, um, you know, that I've never, I've never had a bad experience as far as going and not being believed by a neurologist or anything like that. But I understand that this is something that's an issue. And so I appreciate, um, you know, it being a thing that's, that's talked about.
thank you, you know, for, for speaking up about these things, um, for sure. So um, you've kind of already shared a little bit as far as some of the adverse experiences that you've, that you've had to come, uh, overcome, but um, individually, do you have any other adverse ex experiences that have affected you that you want to share? For me, if my adverse experiences have come mostly in terms of immigration, I'm a DACA recipient standing for the for National for Childhood Arrivals, an initiative enacted by President Obama through, the, through an executive order in 2013, I can't remember, maybe 2014. Don't quote me on it. But um, <laughs> it, it's been difficult because, especially with education, my parents really instilled education into us. It was like mm -hmm. school, school, school. I remember um, I lost my voice one time. Oh, school. it was the funniest thing. Uh, funniest story. And, and like, my dad told us to me to go to school with a whiteboard and to write the questions out for teachers. I'm like big on asking questions. Everyone's like, you're going to be a lawyer. And I'm like, a lawyer? Yeah, right. I said that for the longest, <laughs> right? And and now I'm lost for the irony. <laughs> Right, and then my dad was like, "Yeah, I know you like to ask questions." So here's the whiteboard, and he's like, "And here's this marker. Take it to school." And of course, I was like writing it the whole time. I was like, "Mm-hmm." He's yeah, like, "You're not missing class. Like, yeah, you're not missing class." Like, unless you're dying, we're like, "What?" I know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> like, and I'm happy that he did that because it's like it's such a big part of my life now. But it's it's mm -hmm. been a lot of trials. Like when it comes to this, it's been really hard just because there's many hindrances when it comes to my immigration status. So I'm not allowed to use receive any of federal and state funds in terms of um, educational funds and many other funds. It was really difficult for going to college. I thought about going, I was a part of the Junior Reserve Special Training Corps, JRPC in high school, and I was an S1, like the administrative assistant for our um, high school JRPC, but I wasn't able, and I wanted to join the military, but I wasn't able to join because of my immigration size. But then I thought, well, am I just joining the military because I feel like I can't go to school because of my immigration size? But thankfully I was able to get a full ride, but it had to be consisting of almost completely private scholarship because I can't qualify for a federal scholarship. But I'm just so thankful I'll be able to receive that. If I didn't, then I don't know what I would have done. So things as simple as like a Pell Grant, but I worked throughout high school and I, it's like I was putting money into the taxes, but that I can't receive any money from, you know? And then afterwards, when it came to applying for law schools, it's really difficult because I was like, oh, again, like I can't even do like the Stafford loan. I can't, I can't even pay back Sally Mae. You know what I mean? Like I can't even like take any money from her as if I'm not giving money to her. But um, so it's like I so it's like I need to find private loans. But private loans are difficult because I don't think can you even apply for bankruptcy? I don't remember. It's like you have to find a co-signer and you have to have great credit for it. And it's just a lot of more hindrances when it came to that. And they don't always have the deferred process as easily. But thankfully, I was able to find a scholarship for law school as well. But I think immigration has been a really big struggle for me is because oftentimes, especially with the current administration, there's been a lot of, oh, well, we're, we're going to rescind DACA so many times. And it's like, this happened at least three times within the past four years. And I'm like, dang, every time you rescind DACA, you have to remember, like, it's not just numbers, it's people. You're affecting people's lives. So I'm the only person in my family who's documented. So if I was to have to go, I mean, my family would be still here and I'd be gone by myself. And in terms of things such as, I'd have to just uproot and leave my life. I haven't been back to Haiti since I left that for because I'm not able to leave and then be able to come back legally. So if I, if I was to go back, it's like, I don't remember anything. I love my home country and I love the connection that I feel to it in terms of the food and the culture and the music and all that and the dress and all of it. But I wouldn't be at home. I guess, and it's yeah. kind of difficult because- Or you don't know it as much as you want to do. Yeah, it's kind of difficult because, like, so like when the time that he was in DACA, so I was a teacher for two years, I taught Spanish in Cincinnati, Ohio, through Teach for America, before I became a law school student. And one of the times that he was in DACA, I was teaching, I kept thinking like, gosh, do I share? Like, it was, I just was like really upset and like really devastated going to school thinking like, okay, so what would I do? Like, what would I have to do if I was to be at risk for deportation again? Like if I was to have to, go to an immigration notice hearing for deportation before a judge. Like, do I just give up my lease? Like, how does that even go? Do I have to make an account somewhere else? Like, is an account in Haiti? Like, what do I tell my students? Do I just get up and leave? Do I quit my job? Like, <laughs> like I don't understand how that goes. Like, but then can, can I even quit if I'm just deported? I don't, I just was a weird process for me. So I'd have to like rush after school to like make sure I made the appointments with the, the lawyers, things like that. I made sure like I was like, doing everything right, like, I make sure, like, I'm never in, like, never even close to anyone if they're ever committing a crime, because God forbid I was, happen to even be, like, in the car as someone's doing something or someone did something, like, then I would be at risk for deportation and at risk of never being able to have citizenship. So it's just, like, all of a sudden that's in the back of my head, like, you know, like, all of a sudden that's a struggle back in my head, like, I always have to think about, I feel like I have to think twice or 18 more times about it.
It's it's just such an evil situation because she can teach the country students, but right. unfortunately the country doesn't see her as deserving to be here. However, she can provide a service to the country. You know. <laughs> you know it. Th that has to be heavy. You know, I'm just over here in awe because you know you are going through things on a day to day basis that you know we're. We don't even think about we don't even we don't even consider and you know you're I, I just I I just want to say that you know I just admire how how your strength and just just doing it and just getting through um that that's a lot I know that that's a lot to deal with um what do you do? I have to ask, what do you do to just um, kind of mentally reset when you're feeling that sense of, uh, of, you know, of being overwhelmed? What do you do? So a lot. I like to journal. I love writing and I'm journaling, reflecting, listening to worship music, contemporary Christian music and gospel, um, reading the Bible, praying. So I try to go back to my faith. I go back to my roots. I go back to who I am especially when I feel like I veered from it. And I think also surrounding myself with people who love me. So I think coming back home during the pandemic was like, it's difficult to, you know, to leave change. home and then come back home after you've been away from home for so long. But I think it's been really helpful because I've been able to have that, that familiar support around me as opposed to feeling like I didn't have that as much. And I think it's been like so nice to be able to have people around me who love me. So when things like that happen, it's like, well, I know I have people who are rather than and people who are like, it's gonna always support me and always love me no matter what. It doesn't matter if like, if the country sees me as this, the country sees me as that, or like, if people look on the news and they say, oh, who are just criminals, who are just come here and take resources, like, oh, I know who I'm wrong, people who like, love me, know that the software is really happening. And that's not like the true narrative is being, um, what's being said is not the true narrative. That's, that's not the reality. The reality is being given. So I, so I guess have people who can encourage me and just like, motivate me to keep pushing. So I just like, feel like, breaking down but it's nice to have people around you who are not breaking down because then it helps you because if you're breaking right. down the time then what are you going to do and i'm sure break sometimes down together. Bird's feels like what's the point you know because she has two degrees like, she's just on a different level speak four languages two degrees i don't hear my one degree but um that's besides the point <laughs> <laughs> and you know she's still going to school for another and school is never an easy thing it's not but it's not going to be as easy as for example me going to school with my status because my status i'm protected so I don't have to fear that, you know. Yeah, I remember before applying to law school, I discussed it with a lawyer I had in Cincinnati. I was like, should I even bother applying if they're rescinding DACA again? Like, will I have to like leave halfway through law school and go go back somewhere? Do you ever experience fear that one or the other, like that you'll be separated again, um, just due to those circumstances? Do you, is that like a daily thing that you think about with everything? I mean, I don't know if I ever told girls this, but sometimes, like, I'm such an emotional person. Like, I get teary-eyed over anything. It's so sad. <laughs> but, um, like, sometimes I'll just be laying in bed at night. I'll just think about, like, God forbid if something happens or she has to go. It's like, what do I do? It's like, you know. But, I mean, it does, it does make it hard, but that's why, like, I'm happy she's here and we're, I'm happy that we're working on this. So she's going to us, like, the biggest lawyer because... You can, with the End Stars movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, and we can, you know, we can bring awareness with our path and we can bring awareness to things like immigration so that, God forbid, you know, God forbid anything happens and we can bring awareness to that before it gets worse. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And you all, you, all you, you are bringing so much awareness and you are speaking, you're using your voices and we just love you. We love what, like, what you're doing. Like, I sit and I, like I said, I binge watch your content. Like that's, oh, that's so <laughs> I love it. That's a great thing. That honestly means so much to us. <laughs> and so thank you just... for the last cause for joining. We just yes. realized, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, lost cause. He's such a great supporter. He's like always supporting. Yes. That's awesome. I uh, see. It's just, it's wonderful when you find those people in your community that are just always there and mm -hmm supporting you no matter what it's just the coolest thing mm -hmm. what do you see your brand becoming with everything that you've shared with us with everything that you've that you've been through that you're doing now 
what do you see it coming you know becoming in 10 years from now we have wild dreams we expect to be well yeah we don't see it we expect to be household names we <laughs> well we are we're also expecting to be entrepreneurs we're looking into starting a project but we don't want to get into too many details just in case not to jinx it or anything but <laughs> <laughs> then also just how do you say this what is paris hilton um a socialite. like a socialite too well i want to be a socialite but <laughs> i think we're also focusing on some of our personal endeavors as well so mm -hmm. for her we love this idea of leadership and black leadership especially black women leadership and for her starting her own clinic as a nurse practitioner there and I would for love me, to start one in Haiti too. For me starting my own law firm and for us um, for building generational wealth for our future families. So building property wealth, investing in land and holding deeds. But I think also starting a foundation to immigrant mothers who have issues who are gonna go through obstacles like finding jobs or gonna go through obstacles, you know, like not being able to go and you know just obstacles with education, with jobs, with literacy, things like that. Because I don't think we focus on that enough in the black community. I don't think we focus on that enough in America. Mm -hmm. Also for young students who have health conditions, we don't focus mm -hmm. on that enough either. So I think furthering our brand in terms of social media, but also it's also about furthering our personal endeavors, but giving back to our community through our law firm, well, my law firm, her health, her clinic, and also through our foundation, just make sure we're giving back to the community who gave to us. Yes, and we realize that um, because we have such unique stories, we can appeal to so many audiences. We can appeal to the young audience, we can appeal to the black audience, we can appeal to immigrants, because our story has a little bit of everything. And we love to share that. We love to show that, hey, we are all connected. We can all work together. You have so much to offer. Uh, ladies and and the thing I love is that not only are your plans um, for your future broad but they're also deep you're actually doing things you mentioned generational wealth and the clinics and helping people and giving back and it's there's not a lot of young people who when you ask them what their goals are you know they're gonna they're gonna mention doing something for the community you know to to, to give back and they, they don't talk about generational wealth all the time. I love that. I love, you know, what your, what your ultimate goals are and how they are just so multifaceted and they, and they, and you're right. You are going to, you do appeal to so many different types of people and people want to see that and they want to see it in combination. So it's going to be really cool. Um, the diamond charm says they are still, and they are still very realistic and attainable. I agree. <laughs> I feel that you all, they are. And I, you know, as long as you are laying down the foundation to see those goals, um, you know, you're, you're manifesting them, you're laying down the foundation, you're doing the work, you're, you're first and foremost trusting God in the process. You are going to get, you know, everything that you want and more. And the aspect of just building generational wealth, I remember growing up, throughout the years, there wasn't a lot of um, Haitian population in Naples, Florida, but the smallest Haitian population that there was, my dad would always like um, contribute and invest and at, like as long as it's a black business, he was all for it. We would go to the black dry cleaners, we would go to the Haitian dry cleaner, even if it was way out of town. We would go to like um, the black cuisine, the black market. I think it's all about putting money back into our community. Cool, cool. That's a, that's amazing, and I I love, you know, the strength and the support, and um, just the the vision. You know, you you all you could tell that you came from very um, strong and um, loving parents who wanted and still want the best for you. You could see it all over you, you. Um, and I am just you, yes. The diamond Char charm says that you're brilliant. You all are, and I, I'm. I'm happy to talk to my friends shoot. Like, I'm happy that I get to know you because you're going to be famous. You're going to be very well known. Like, I see that, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just happy that I can say, you know, I actually interviewed them. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy.
happy that I could say that. But uh, again, ladies, thank you so much for your time tonight. And just this was very, um, it was sudden. I, I, I just, I had to get you on. I, I wanted to do the double and it had to be you two. So thank you for taking the time out to do this. I can't wait to talk to you more. I can't wait to dive into more topics and to uh, just kind of watch your your um, your vision uh, unfold even more. It's going to be really exciting. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for inviting us onto your show. It's really an honor. Um, please, guys, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Gene Twins. It's in our bio and our Instagram. And go ahead and follow us on Instagram on The Gene Twins. <laughs> thank you everyone who joined the live. We really appreciate it. And we just really appreciate you to even ask us. We honestly were like, we we're like, we're like, we're, we wanted her. to ask her. We're like, oh my <laughs> gosh, she asked us first. <laughs> you, uh, you were under my radar for a long time. Oh, <laughs> I've been watching y'all, uh, and I was like, um, when should I ask them? Um, now. And so, <laughs> perfect timing. And so, um. Uh, yeah, I I was I kind of hesitated because you you seem so busy. Like that's the honest truth. I was like, I don't. I said I don't. I I'm kind of afraid of rejection. So Aww, I was. So we're like, well, afraid of rejection too. So <laughs> what if they're like busy and they say no? <laughs> so you know, it worked out. And again, it's been really neat. I'm so I'm excited because, like I said, once. I interview you, you're, you're kind of just my friend, like, yeah, mm -hmm. just, you know, I, I know y'all now, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that girls know you be, like ahead, um, before and then too. Because I, I do more of the, um, I, I do more of like the managing, the coordinating for our um, Instagram page. I just and get I, the ideas and she makes it happen. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time, I was like, oh my gosh, I really like this page. I like, really like this um, like, woman. Like, she's so awesome. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, because I was like, She's talking about like liking things and she so she didn't really know this because she's not really on the page she's probably ever wants a lot to like like something or to comment on something and i was like oh my gosh, <laughs> really asked about being on like her live she does this cool live and like, yeah. she really asked her about being on her um on her podcast and she was like okay and then later i was like telling her i'm like this is who she is she's like oh cool 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 we should and do it we'll i do ended it. up on one of your lives i think it was with um oh this one girl who um you were you like it was you had someone on your live who I don't know if she was an author or something. I don't know what it was. She said many authors. Okay. Um. It was. I don't know. It. It, it was this one person, and um. You're like, oh, the Jean twins joined. I was just like, oh, oh yeah. She's so sweet. We were on your live, and you said, oh, the Jean twins. And we we're like, oh. you're like, you're like, you guys are oh, positive. Okay. We're like, I think oh. I'm sorry. And I wait. I said that you all joined, or she. Yeah. You're like, oh, the Jean twins joined. Thank you oh, guys oh, for joining. You're listen, so positive. Listen, whenever you guys join. I'm like excited. No. I'm, I'm like I'm like a huge fan. So whenever you you guys find the time to pop in, because I know you're incredibly busy, and you know doing and doing everything else in the world, that's good. And so I'm I'm always really excited. So yeah, I I, I try to give as many um, shout outs as I can, but I'm always really excited when you guys pop in because you guys. I was like, Gertz, I love her. Yes. <laughs> her. <laughs> um, you, y'all should make, do you have TikToks? We do have TikToks. Please we follow do. us on TikToks. We're also the Jean Twins on TikTok. Our okay. TikTok, we yeah. always, TikToks are so time consuming. Oh they are. my God. I'm not a good TikToker yet. Me like, are we, are we? I like my after. sister. My sister, the Diamond Charms, you should follow her on TikTok. Yeah, she, we will. We will. She's really funny. And she has, like, she's really good at it. Like, she has it down. It's an art. So maybe we'll get some fun <laughs> with her because we're not, like, good at TikTok at all. I mean, we, we're decent, I guess. But um, I think after we, um, we're, like, I think, I think after we get monetized on YouTube, then we can um, end up on TikTok more. Mm -hmm. mm. We, we just don't want to, you know, spread ourselves too thin. And especially with um, social media, each each social media platform takes so much time. There's an algorithm to each one. We just want to focus on each one, you know, like spend all our time into mastering that algorithm. We're mastering Instagram algorithm, so we're super happy about that. But, yeah, so that, it's an accomplishment. <laughs> Instagram is, it takes a while to kind of get, you know, like a good organic following, but once you like figure out like 
the niche, you figure out who your audience is and you kind of find out when to, I mean, I'm not one of those people that, that like waits till, you know, 7 PM sharp to post. I might post a million things. Oh, we do that. We're like, we're like, okay, post at this time. We even have timers because we're like, this is the time where we get more traffic. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm bad at I mean, it. And it's so smart. It is so smart. I like, it's just not something that I do, but like, it's, I mean, it works once you figure it out, like once you start figuring it out and, and, so that's the coolest thing, but that's another topic. We'll have to have a, a yeah. separate live discussion about that. But yeah. that's also not good though, because when I do like end up, cause I'm like, by, I'm like to the T, I'm like, okay, I have to post at this time in order to get this many likes or something. Then if I miss a day of posting, I'm like, good, no. I'm like, oh, that's, oh, no. that's not good to you. It's like, you're living your life by like, you know, like it's like social media is dictating your life. So that's not good too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got. There definitely has to be balance. I yeah. mean, I feel like, you know, there's some times where I take a break, but I don't talk about taking a break. I don't. I I just don't let people know just because that's just, you know, to me it feels like less of a break sometimes. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but you kind of just have to go accordingly and be aware of how you feel like there's some people and they can just they go like clockwork and mm -hmm. they're not even exhausted but for me like you know sometimes if i'm posting a whole bunch or if i'm on and i'm just i have to just i just have to take a moment and just breathe in real fresh air for a minute you know i think, I think those people sorry no you're good I think those people who um who seem like they're not exhausting exhausted I think that's like the social media um I guess the the look because you know you can only see what they post in a picture I think um social media is a full time job and I think I think that's why I mean, sometimes it can get so depressing and I it's and sometimes it can just get it does get very exhausting because it's like wow you know you're you have to balance your like you're saying it's a whole balance to it. and i'm just so happy like girls and i we started a twin brand because sometimes i'm i have my days where i'm in a total funk and i'm like and i don't want to get out of it and I, I know i have to get out of it like i know i have to do this i know i have to do this for our brand but i just can't you know I'm like it's just too much sometimes you know <laughs> i think no. we work together because i think that um it last things to be easier because i yeah she i don't i mean i'm not as big of a fan of the editing the youtube i'm like I can pass on that, but um, she's not being a fan of like dealing with the yeah, social media stuff. Instagram, I'm just like, here, girls, edit this post, like, do this post for me, and like, I'll handle the YouTube, you handle the, the yeah. Instagram. That means nice <laughs> that we can work together on that. We all we kind of figured out like what we really enjoy, what we really mm -hmm. do like, and so we can kind of like dig into that. I think the beginning of our brand is a little difficult because, I mean, like, if I don't like something, I'm not gonna be all gung ho about it. And so when she was like doing YouTube, and I'd be like let me know when you're done but it's like it's not encouraging because it's like it's like i should be encouraging her that's like the bulk of the work that's what it takes a lot of time so i would like to now i've mastered just sitting next to her as she does this so she feels like i'm there so <laughs> or it's like um like when i and i'm with my adhd when it kicks in i'm just like so distracted all the time I'm like girls you want this my girls what about this girls girls she's just like you know just let me edit the youtube and just please just stay in a corner and just please i'm just like okay i'm like a little squirrel so it's like it's good where she's able to do you know she's able to take over at those times you know? yeah <laughs> and then she like readily falls asleep huh that you know like the strengths and your strengths and weaknesses yes that you kind of like can just work like a well-oiled machine yeah my it, thinks that you're adorable by the way that the both of you are adorable oh thank you <laughs> she has you're been... so supportive honestly <laughs> Yeah, they're they're awesome. Uh, she she has twins too, so she oh. um, got, yeah. I have we, love twins. we do we love. Twins. She's got four girls and the middle two oh, are their oh, twins. She's sort of like Gerds. Gerds wants two sets of twins, and she wants a set of triplets. With our family dreams, she just might <laughs> luck out. I don't know. Yeah, we I'm, have older twin brothers, twin aunts. Well, this doesn't count, but our neighbors are twins. I don't know if it counts. My <laughs> my godmother's. <laughs> We have a cousin, so we just have she has twin co-workers. Yeah. Hopefully we can all put our twin together and give me some twins. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I can skip the So you're you have twin you have twin brothers. Are they identical? 
They're for Tara. That's so funny because one looks like Tara, one looks like me, even though her and I look a lot alike. But, but, but our differences kind of like feed off of them. So like, yeah. like our diff little differences that we have, like I look just like one of them. She looks just like the other yeah. one, but they don't look a lot. Wild. So, and his personality is like hers, like where she, she's a deep sleeper, he's a deep sleeper. And um, I'm not a deep sleeper. No, 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 sorry. He's not a deep sleeper, but he hates when people bother him when he's sleeping. And like, she can't, she's a very light sleeper, so she hates the lighting. It's so funny because she, she hates lighting and she hates like, she hates when someone's watching like shows or talking on the phone and she's sleeping, but she stays talking on the phone and I'm sleeping. Like, thank God I'm a good <laughs> I can take it. I'm just like, I'm like, but I could take it. But <laughs> then my, like my other, like our other brother, um, this one who looks like a lot like me, so energetic. And so like, whoo, whoo, whoo. And I'm, I'm like that too. I'm just like, come on, let's go, let's go. And she's just like, and Gina, just please. She's like, give me a minute. I'm like, gosh, we're going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> That is just so, that's crazy. Like, my mom had two sets. I don't know how she did it. Mm -hmm. We also have an older sister. She's, she's the only one that's not, she's the only that's one not multiple, sister. right? Huh? Yeah, she's the only one that's not multiple. So, our older brother, our older sister than us. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I wonder if your mom felt so like. like. I'm sure she felt <laughs> that. So, we're adopted. So, our. Biological mother had our older twin brothers and had us, and then our we adopted our adopted mother had our older sister. So yes. it's kind of like two different families, but one family. But <laughs> oh, another fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, you could even do a YouTube channel about that, about adoption, and yeah, we could. Yeah. We could. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, y'all are just so cool. I just I love y'all. I love y'all. Right. <laughs> But again, thank you so much for your time. We will have many, many more discussions. And thank you for um, just explaining to the world, um, you know, a little bit more about you all and what you do. There, I still feel like there's so much that I cannot wait to learn. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's been a blast. It's definitely been a blast tonight. Uh, run it back one more time and let and let us know where we can follow you. Okay. On Instagram, the Jean Twins, yes. or if you want her personal page, that's the prettier Pretty half. half. The my personal page is the cuter half. You can also find us as the Jean Twins on Snapchat, YouTube, YouTube Facebook, and yeah. WhatsApp, and, and TikTok. Yes. yes, we are currently uh -huh. in the process of making a website. Please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube, the Jean Twins, as well as a LinkedIn, and we're waiting for the Google review to come in for our Google business. So then. <laughs> for that as well. <laughs> nice. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, everybody. Please do. And um, yes, thank you so much, ladies. Y'all have a wonderful night, and I will definitely be you. soon. Okay, thank you. Right. you so welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys for joining. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So they are just two amazing young ladies and for all of you who um watched us live tonight thank you so much for popping in uh, i encourage you to follow them on youtube they are doing some amazing things i really feel that it is important to uh, bring people to my platform who are talking about you know advocacy and who are um just outwardly doing what they can they can do to make um, the world better, to bring more uh, social justice, racial racial justice, and just justice on all different levels. So uh, again, thank you all so much for joining. I encourage you to follow the Gene Twins. Um, you can follow them on YouTube on their link that happens to be in their bio. And thanks so much for popping in on the Fizzbit. Feel free to share this live video and you all have a good night. I will see you soon. Bye.